And here we are again, ladies and gentlemen, the fighter and the kid. Guess what? We we laid down a very funny hour yesterday. Might be the best ever. Yeah. Might be our best podcast ever. Guess where it yesterday. is? It's in the Matrix. Good luck finding it because apparently it's in the it hidden archives. It didn't upload very well, or there was a scramble issue with the signal on our phones. You uh, know, you, I. I I blame DJ, the producer. Yeah. He, uh, he gets 95% of the blame. Yeah. You get 5% because your phone, yeah. I feel like we could watch satellite TV on it. It's I feel big, like we could control the nuclear bombs. It's a big phone. It's, a, it's, it's a, the it's, biggest it's, phone I've ever seen. It's the Samsung. I'm it's sponsored. an iPad Air. Sponsored by Samsung. Um, I, the, the highlight of yesterday for me was, was uh, Big Brown's shirt. He was wearing a medium. He's 250 pounds. It was, it was, it was a, a double X. It's whatever. Well, I'm 250 it, it, pounds it, right it, now. It very much hugged your body, and you got a lot of, you got, there was a lot of hungry eyes going on. Well, we went to lunch after we dropped the best podcast of all time that DJ lost, yeah, and then we yeah. went to lunch off Abbott Kenny. You got some, you got some heavy, heavy eyes. Did I? Yeah, yeah, from, especially from a lot of the cougars in the area. And by cougars, I mean women that are 10 years younger than me. Uh, and that's, now, that's were, how old I am. Like, were they were they looking at me or were they looking at you? Because you have the number one movie in America. I'm glad you asked that question. That is the mystery, isn't it? I mean, that is the mystery. Is that Brian Callen, the guy who played the police officer, uh, uh, with the twist, uh, with the character twist in, yeah. uh, in Ride Along? Th- curveball. I know. Spoiler who alert, knows? Brian. Don't, don't, curveball. No, don't say anything. Curveball. Don't cop. say anything. Don't say anything. We don't want to ruin the movie, but apparently, I'm very good in it. Um, you made the movie, I'd say. That's crazy talk. Kevin Hart made the movie. No, uh, no, Kevin Hart no. is the funniest guy I've ever worked with. Now, I can't keep a straight face. Now, most people I know, you know, any any celebrity, any comedian, yeah. any of our friends in our group, your close friends, it will obviously your close friends say this, but anyone, sure. even people who aren't close to you, yeah. um, Whitney Cummings, Chelsea Handler, anyone I know says... Brian Cal- I'm not just saying this to hype your ego. Yeah. But they say Brian Callen is the funniest guy I know. And I agree with this. That's I appreciate it. That's that. why you're my business partner. I appreciate it. If, if you get less funny, you will be replaced I, I, pretty fast. You will fire me. There, there's a lot of I have a lot of resumes that people are just begging to begging get in. Begging to here. break in. Look, I appreciate the compliment. Now most people now people are saying Kevin Hart's the funniest man on I think he is on Earth. I you think a, he is. As a comic, I I'm disagree. telling you, I'm telling you I think he's the funniest person I've ever met. Well, that doesn't mean shit. To me. Well, he's so funny, you know, off the cuff. I when feel you like hang out with him. He's just always hilarious. He, uh, see, that would wear me out because you're because you're funny at the right time. He it's wouldn't. About he wouldn't wear you out. No, no, he'd kill you. Because because I know so guys funny. who are so funny all the time. After a while, I'm like, all right, man. No, no, no but the, the difference is that Kevin is one of the hardest working people. Well, I didn't, well, he works well, his rump off, well, and he's hilarious. Well, I didn't say anything about his work ethic. All right. Well, I just feel as though you don't know what you're talking about, and you have to spend some social time with him. <laughs> That's what you've got to do. How long have you known Kevin? Uh, well, it doesn't really matter because you're wearing earphones, and we're not taking a call, and I'm not. I That's always fine. wear earphones. It just makes you That's feel more my legit. thing. It, ma- it makes it feel like we're what we're doing here is legit. We're at Fox. I this is our studio. Yep. Oh, speak, speaking of our studios and me carrying and us basically carrying this podcast on our back yeah. and Fox, you're yeah. welcome. How about parking today? The Dark Knight needs a good spot. It took me forever to find parking. Can we get Fire and the Kid parking in front? You gotta, I want to say Brian Callen, Brendan Schaub. Have you Instagrammed your tricked out ride now? You tricked your M6 out. I, I, just, I, took, I just gave people a little sneak peek wow. of the back. I don't want I want I don't want too many people seeing it and then I don't knows. even like I don't even like cars and I, I that's a that's a slick mobile. That's how I knew it went well when you went, Wow, that's pretty cool. Because yeah. you don't like cars. You know, the, the you're car, not a man. The car is so slick that if you know, if I saw I can't really tell who you are in the car. Yeah. And I might be like, ah, what a what a yoker. I'd like to smack that guy around. But then you get out. I get out you're a little bigger and, than most and people. You're not doing shit. You got closed and up you're ears. Not saying shit. Well, my feet feel very light and very hard today. So please mind your P's and Q's. Now you, now you came. We we got a busy day today. This is this is the fight on the kid. We're I would say we're busy here in L.A. You came straight from set from the Goldbergs from the Goldbergs show on Fox playing up playing a gym teacher. It's really a fun role. That's and that, right. That show set in the eighties. Well, I that, it, it flashes back to the eighties period, and that's when you are. That's some, exactly. Right. Now I think people should tune in for the sure fact you have short shorts on. I have very short shorts on. And You're by blasting the way, those thighs. What about the dots all over your legs? They had to, they had to cover it up. With no, uh, got, they've gotten better. They had but to they put ha- makeup all oh, over your legs. Oh, don't kid yourself. Oh yeah, they had to, they had to make up my legs up. Oh, I got makeup on my man. legs right now. Uh huh. Yeah. 
Man. Don't have good skin. That's when you know it's a problem. Hey, I have skin issues. Hey, this just in. <laughs> Got skin issues, guy. What a, I feel like if you just get in the sun a little bit. Well, I'm too busy for that. Now, let me describe to everyone what Brian's wearing. He's wearing this kind of Under Armour hoodie thing, but it's like a, a real... Sh- Cheap version of it. Sir, it sir. looks like you robbed a sports authority. Did you rob a sports Listen, authority before bro, you came in here? This is a bob a lot. You know, you can't even buy this unless you go to a tennis specialty store. Thank God. And, There's a reason for that. And, and There's I a like, reason only dorks wear I that like hoodie. Pretending I'm, I'm you, you know sponsor. what you look like? You know what you look like? What? You look like a dork. I look at my. Look. <laughs> You look like a dork that came straight know, from the tennis. Store. I caught a glimpse of myself, and my, my, my upper body looks like an egg because this thing is a little too big, this sweatshirt. And it's got a shell. It's got a hard shell. Yeah. It does not really a hoodie. It doesn't know what it is. It's got a, is it a windbreaker or a hoodie? What are you what doing in that material? thing? Was it made of, by, by NASA? It's like couch, the stuff you'd find on an on a airplane on It's an so couch. weird. What made you want to buy this? Um, I make bad decisions sometimes. <laughs> no, like, you know what happened? You sign up for privates with your gay tennis instructor, and you... Say, start that again, start that sentence again. You signed up for tennis lessons man. with your, with your weak-ass tennis instructor, and he convinced you to look like him and to buy this thing so you can, both, you, so you can both watch Pete Sampras at, with hard-ons I'm glad on you brought up my tennis instructor because you guys should hear this, and you especially. Me? Shop. Yeah. My tennis instructor is black belt in Taekwondo. Don't worry about that. But here's the bottom yeah, line. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that He's before. He's an open-level sure tennis player. He plays for six to eight hours a day. Like yeah, because it's tennis. No, no, no. He, it's that's tennis. a lot of running. Hey, guess what? I could play golf for 24 hours Hold a day. I could, I could do NASCAR no, for you 30 could. hours. No, you could No, you could No, I drove from no, California here in 14 hours without any rest Tennis is just like boxing in that I'll you're, kill you. you're moving I will kill, around. I will jump over this table and slap it's, you. <laughs> Listen. Oh, yeah, really? How many times do you get hit in the face? Sir, it's all footwork, ball? okay? It's all footwork, so it's very, very exhausting. And by the way, he plays six to eight hours a day and says that his secret is goji berries. So eat some goji berries. So hold on. Let me get this straight. He plays tennis for six to eight hours a day. That's right. He eats goji berries. Yeah. And he dresses like a dork. He doesn't dress like a dork. He wears shorts. <laughs> short that, shorts. He, he, he wears that weird ass hoodie. He doesn't have long legs. Um, he's short. He's not tall. Who is he? A white, white, rich guy. He's, silver fox. He's uh, Asian. He's Chinese. Ethnically Chinese, but American. And uh, but thank you for wow that. yeah wow this this yeah. took a weird a weird turn yeah he's Chinese he's I think he's from Taiwan and you don't even know where that is and he um he's a he's a very good athlete well how about this and you Brian? know I crush you in, in any no hold on. let me do let me do you and your your tennis uh, ball boy a favor yeah. I will come down there uh, and where do you guys play in Westwood or some some fancy we play oh, all over you, bro. you play in Westwood we with the rich over, people we how about you play over. in Beverly Hills how about I'll meet you guys in Beverly Hills yeah I'll come there some Jordan Air Force One shoes yeah. some short shorts yeah a tank top uh-huh. and beat the shit out of both of you let me explain and i have zero lessons let me ex- how about that let me ex- oh and how about i can play tennis for 15 hours straight we're, we're gonna give instagram- me some coconut water i play tennis for 15 hours straight we're gonna instagram this now that you've challenged me i just want to say before we get into the fights that we would play a set and i want you to look at me when i say this Are you looking at me no 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 before you make the statement i want you i want you to look and at me. listen your little if we play tennis set, boy there we play i set, want you both in jean play, shorts cut off if we play two sets if we play three sets ready you're not winning a game you're not winning oh man a game. see this is see let me let do me do people me? a favor this is the problem with the false sense of confidence when you hire someone to teach you a sport and then you think you can beat more athletic people because you paid some rich guy to teach tennis he's not a rich guy and and you're not coming Close to me on a court. In fact, most In of fact, my balls. In fact, I'll beat m- both of you. Most of my balls. M- one verse two. You can't hit my ball back. One How about verse that? two. How you, about one verse two? You can't return my serve. How about that? Get your racket in the way. Try. <laughs> All right. Keep your eye on the ball because you're going to start to panic. How long you been playing game. tennis? Long time, my friend. How long? A long time. You like my spin kick? You Wait till you see my forehand, and please respect my backhand. Because if you don't, I'll teach you respect. You play. You play once a week, twice a week. I, sp- I play twice a week sometimes if I have time. If I'm not working in major motion pictures and TV, and doing stand up, I'm talented. <sighs> All right, let's move on. I've had it. I've, the challenge has been laid down. You won't get a game. We'll play some tennis. No, when I you're need, ready. I, I need both of you there, though. Well, he'll kill you. He's an open level player. You wouldn't open. Return. What's open level mean? Before we move on, notch, what's open? notch below pro. So he's amateur. Notch below pro. 
Well, I'm a notch below pro too, so he's an amateur. So we're the same. Me and him are the same level. I'm oh, not a pro. He's not no, a no, pro. No, no, you're, no. You're, you're a level two. You'd have to go to three, three, five, four, four, five, 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 six. And then That's the amateur open, scale? Then you'd be an open level player. Gotcha, gotcha. So, yeah. so wait. So, you're, wait, wait. You're just, a two. You're a two. I'm a two. Wait, yeah. so he's a pro? He's, no, he's, he's not. He's a notch pro. No, he's pro. not. No, he's, he's not. Notch. Wait, wait, no, no, hold on. He's a pro? He's a notch No, pro. he's not. No, okay. So we're both amateurs. Great, great. Brian, listen, if you want tennis lessons, I'll pay you half the price. You pay me half the price. Teach yeah. the same crap. Yeah? Yeah. I, I can't wait to Instagram me destroying you. We're going to do highlights of me destroying you on the court. Let's move on. Let's we move on. We got some on. fights. We this got some fight fights. The kid, not the tennis guy and the kid. We could be. You, you keep this up. It's, I'm going to hire that tennis guy. Tennis, tennis is very similar. The footwork is very similar to boxing. I'm going to slap um, you. I'm going to slap you. Don't even turn on your giant. Know, don't I, look I at your phone. Don't look at your giant phone. phone. Don't turn that giant thing on. All right. That's the most obnoxious phone I've ever seen. Ign- say, say, how do you spell U.S. again? What? How do you s- pronounce U.S.? U.S.? Yeah, the, the U and S. If I put U and S together, how do you pronounce it? Us? Us. Us. Wait, say that. Us. Is that from karate? When you would. Us. 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 Hey, hey, are you talking to. Us. I don't even know. You have the weirdest accent. I do. I do have an accent. It's weird, huh? It's the weirdest accent on the planet. I don't know what's going on here. Us. Us. Where are you you from? Uh, Czechoslovakia. Anyways. 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 Fox this Saturday. I feel like it's Groundhog Day. I feel like we went over all this yesterday. Okay. We're However, pros. let's do this. We're professionals. We got- so we got Fox this Saturday, yeah. 5 p.m. Pacific time. Main event, Benson Henderson, Josh Thompson. Well, Who are you picking, my man? Here's the thing about Josh Thompson. He is every bit as strong. And probably, and I think, if I'm, I think he's taller than Benson Henderson. Um, he's a, he's a good striker. He's he's the complete package. So uh, all I'll say is Benson Henderson's going to have his hands full. The reason I'm going to give it to Benson Henderson is because I think Benson Henderson. There's a reason he was a champion for so long. He's still you know right there in the running, and I think he's got to be hungry. Yeah. This is, there's a lot riding. There on this is. Fight. Ben needs this win. Um, because in a way, in a way, as as crazy as it sounds, if he loses this fight, he goes into sort of this. You know, third tier. He, he, all of a sudden, you're, like, you're not tier? talking about him. No, I mean, I mean, third, third place. Tier? Third place. You're not talking about him as much. That's true. It's a tough one. It's it is a tough, a tough one. one. It's so he, he lost to Pettis, and so Thompson was supposed to fight Anthony Pettis. Yeah. Pettis got hurt. He had uh, knee surgery. So now Thompson Henderson fight for the number one contender spot. Yeah. Um, what was your What would your take have been if Thompson fought Pettis? I, I like Pettis, man. I, I think his stand up's just too unconventional, too tough. He, he's obviously his groundwork is getting up there. Um, did he surprise you, Pettis? Did you did you think Pettis was going to be that good? No, I mean literally, man. In the UFC, nothing surprised me. You can yeah. tell me anything; nothing surprises me. Right? Nothing. Right? Ever surprised me in a fight? Ever? I never go, oh dang. The last time I was surprised in a fight it was when Anthony Pettis in the WC did a jumping kick. Off the cage well, the and kicked thing Benson Henderson. And in the apparently face. they practice that, which cracks me up. They apparently he up? actually practices that. Yeah, how do you awesome. think? Yeah, what well, do you think? You just made it I up? I just figured, you know, he'd seen it. He's like, let me try no, that. Rufus Sports, man. That, that's what they do down there. It's they crazy. do some crazy stuff. It's crazy. That, those are the, that's the X factor. That's the stuff you pull out the Hail Marys. Here's a little story um, with, uh, <laughs> with Ben and I. So, my very first gym I ever went to, Delgado Boxing. In uh, Denver, just in the heart of Denver, um, I didn't know where to go. I looked this place up uh, in the yellow pages. I walk in, and this kid's holding the door. I said, "Oh, what's up, man? You here? What are you, a boxer?" He goes, "No, no, I'm here uh, for jujitsu." I said, "Oh, sweet, me too. You have any fights?" He goes, "No, I wrestled some uh, at a small school in college, um, but you know, I want to make it to the UFC. Why are you here?" I said, "Try same thing, man. Trying to get to the UFC. Got to start somewhere. We shake hands. We go up. We train together." That was really the last time I saw him. Well, that kid was Ben Henderson. The last time uh, that, since I saw him then was at a UFC event. Him and I were both in the UFC signing posters together. It's crazy. That's awesome, man. Pretty That's cool, right? That's an awesome story. I love that. I ben, love that Ben's stuff. just a great, but, great but guy, when you were t- As you tell the story, I was thinking about this, and I, this is my question. You know, it, sometimes you see guys who were 
D2, D3 athletes, um, but they make it a long way in the UFC. And, and it's almost like well, you didn't get too orthodox about one thing. Then you have like no. Olympic wrestlers. That, I think I think. Oh, go ahead. Well, no. My my question is, if you could, is if I take a thirteen year old, or I take a, you know, whatever it is, and you're going to mold this kid into a perfect MMA fighter, I know the answer is well, you'd have him go to TriStar and you know learn the way. I didn't Rory, say that. All right, but yeah. I mean, no but but is it better? Is it better to be really good at just one thing and then study other disciplines, or is it better to be kind of? Okay at wrestling, so you don't get in permanent habits, and then go into other stuff. I don't. Like, I don't. I don't think there's one answer for that. I think if you look at successful mixed martial artists, there's no one really in the UFC killing it who won a gold in the Olympics. You see a bronze medal winner. You see a silver medalist winner. Right. You see people who were, you know, not a lot of national champs. You know, you got Daniel Cormier. You got uh, Kane Velasquez. You got Phil Davis. You got these guys who are definitely stud wrestlers. Number one gold. So I think you, if, if you have to pick, I want that third place. I want that Ronda Rousey tenacity, third place bronze medal winner who have, they have a chip on their shoulder. Yeah. That's what you want. You want. I got a chip on my shoulder. Yeah. Most really successful people, and especially in fighting, because you have to have this deep, deep, passionate drive to get up every morning and pursue this dream of being the best in the world. Yeah. And I think that comes from having a chip on your shoulder. Just, just having to prove that you are. Just to just to prove to yourself you that, belong you belong, that you belong, that you belong, that you have the skills. You know, for me, it started it started in football. Um, at University of Colorado. Listen, I, I I was the only white guy, you know, playing running back. I was, You're not I was white, an H back. I know what you mean. You know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. So I was the only uh, white guy in, in in the running backs group, and uh, man, I was damn good at football. I really was. The guy in front of me was drafted first in the second round, and then so I th- thought about playing tight end. My uh, the guy was drafted in the first round, playing tight end. My best friend Joe Kloffenstein. So. Um, it, it, just, it just, you got this chip on your shoulder. I, I didn't get the same treatment as these guys. I was always grinding. My philosophy is hard work's going to beat talent and hard work's going to pitch, put you in the position to, uh, to, to get drafted in the NFL and be a first round draft pick. And, and, well, well, and well, that's correct not, work. Well, correct that's not work. always the, the yeah. that, it doesn't work like that. Right. The, it's not, the world is not fair. Professional sports sure as hell is not fair. The hardest working guy isn't going to be the first pick in the right. draft the hardest working guy isn't going to sign a hundred million dollars because you need a certain USC. amount of hardware i mean you need certain genetics yeah. you need there's a lot of factors nah, there's a ton of facts. being it's, seen at the right time having, a, having yeah. a great day when they're there well yeah i always showed up i always yeah. performed but it's about getting the opportunity it's it's a, it's just about timing there's all sorts of stuff that yeah. goes into it yeah well especially the, 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 the ufc i always feel like you just have very little margin for error. You just can't lose too many times or you're out. I mean, there's a thousand things. You, know? you think? Yeah. You get injured. You, nobody's there to, you know, pay your salary. It just goes on and on. Um, mm. so who do you have in this fight, Benson Henderson and uh, Josh Thompson? Obviously, uh, Ben's my boy. I'll never pick against Ben. Um, so well, I, I mean, you know what, dude? I'm but, not but, 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 be but, a politician. Well, I, I'm with you, but however... Ben is the was the former title holder. He's going to beat Josh time. Thompson. Yes, yeah. it's it's not like I'm picking an underdog here because my no, friend. No, he's you know a what badass. I'm saying. He's Henderson's going to beat him. I'll, I'll say uh, it, it's going to be a great fight. Could could possibly be a fight of the night for sure. Do you think this is this is knockout fight or is this? I mean, no, they both no. have to be very careful. It's, it's going to be a scrappy, scrappy fight. It's going to be back and forth. It's going to be a five round majority decision for Ben okay. Henderson. Okay, who you got? How are you training? When you have to fight a, a five round fight versus a three round fight, how does it affect your training? Well, I've I've never been uh, in a five round fight, champion fight. I'd like to. I was hoping to in this next one, but right. things happen. Um, so still waiting on a word for that. However, um, nothing, nothing, man. Most 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 guys train five rounds. You're doing a little extra cardio, but um, you're just sparring more. So in order for me to get ready for a three round fight, I'll spar five rounds. So I'm assuming. Uh, Ben only does, uh, I want to say, five week camps. Really? He's always training. He's like me. But you're kind of the same way. You're always yeah, training. Yeah, Ben and I are very similar where he's always training. He's always in shape. Yeah, yeah I'm so, always so, amazed that some guys don't do that. I know, right? It's amazing to me. I so, know some certain, guys. Think, I know some fighters that are pretty well known who don't train a lot. No, they don't train a lot until they get a fight it's and crazy. then they kind of get in shape. Like you'll see pictures, especially guys who cut weight, you'll see pictures of guys like if. If the UFC made him take a picture right now with their shirt off, they're going to look like just like uh, yeah. a melting armadillo in the sun. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, it's weird. Like, not good. Yeah. That's how certain guys are. I just 
I don't know. Maybe I have a complex. I just can't do that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I have you ever been out of shape, Brian? No. I but never did have. the you just have good genes because oh yeah, but I also work out yeah. every day. Uh, I mean, well, I'm tennis even, isn't I'm a not, workout. Obviously, yeah. I'm not a pro athlete. Tennis isn't a strict well, workout. When you see me play tennis and you see my footwork, when you see my boxing footwork, you, when you see the footwork I bring from boxing to tennis, Bo- when you do boxing, I agree. God, dude, that's a crazy that's a crazy workout. It's also because I don't know how to use how to relax yet. I don't know how to kind of yeah, you're like calling your breath. It's and crazy. To go all it's hard. crazy. It's crazy. Uh, you'll learn one but, day, grasshopper. But having said all that. Um, you just have good genes. Some people do. Like yeah. like my buddy Joe Clavenstein. This kid is six six, every bit of two hundred sixty pounds. I've Ooh. never seen anybody like him. No, never. It's really he, weird. He could literally. He can eat whatever he, looks he wants. Like a, he could. He could literally eat uh, banana splits all day. Yeah. Every he, this kid eats like trash. Eats fast food. He looks, He doesn't he juice. He doesn't do anything. Than a superhero. He actually he, looks like a bigger superhero. Yeah, man. Like and he 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 has bad eating habits. He drinks milkshakes. Candy. He'll stay up late. He can drink alcohol, it's crazy. and he's shredded and handsome. I mean, he has a giant nose and tiny eyes, but yeah, some, no, he's some a good-looking guy. Yeah, he's a good. He gets. He's, he's got a he does all right. Jaw. He's a good-looking kid. Yeah, Don't kid yourself. Big, big dude. Anyways, he. Uh, yeah, man, he just has these crazy genes where he gets away with it. I feel like you're the same way. I'm not. I'm not. If if I were to eat whatever I want, I would look like Roy. S- I'd look like Roy Nelson. You get a little soft in the middle, huh? I probably would. Yeah, you get a little soft in the. I probably have, the I'd still have this this apple bottom would blow out like J Lo. Is that right? <laughs> I'd have that J Lo apple bottom. Yeah, that wouldn't be a still, bad you'd thing. You'd still be walking around with that that six inch nub, huh? Little What'd nub. you say? You still be walking around with that six inch nub? No, no, come on, bro. You've seen this thing. Just kind of like a little. That's my sound effect for what you got going. You ever heard of a dick dick? You know what that is? It's the smallest member of the antelope family. And when I when I think of your uh, piece, I always think of a. Dick dick. <laughs> dick dick? If it could make noise, it would make this noise. Dick dick? Yeah. That's terrible. I'm not hey, look at my dick. huge body. <laughs> anyway. Anyways, back to the fights, Brian. Um, the fights. All right, um, let's, let's move on. So we're both taking Henderson, the main event. Yeah. Uh, Stipe versus Gonzaga. I'm going to let you pick. Obviously, I fought Gonzaga. Stipe is a tra- was a training partner of mine, so I know both guys well, st- very well. Yeah. This is a, this, I'm interested <clears> in your <throat> point because... Gonzaga is not the fighter he was when he fought you. He's he's really he seems to either have improved or is on a winning streak for whatever reason. His last loss was to me. Yes, he's that always is been he's always been a threat anyway, uh, with those crazy leg kicks. I think you told me when he kicked you in the legs, you had to you had to be wheeled in a wheelchair. He the he kicked me a couple of times. I dropped him with a left hook. Uh, Two or three times because of his leg kicks, but I would eat the leg kicks and exchange a leg kick for my left hook. Right, which I would drop him, but I'd still feel the impact of the leg kick oh. i had to be wheeled through the airport in a handicapped chair you had to be wheeled through because you just couldn't put weight on your i your, couldn't walk yeah my, my, my leg was so swollen and stuff no because i'm young brian i don't have freaking don't veins know. all over my legs all weird like you hey man i don't have veins i just have <laughs> you're some weird shit blotches. <laughs> red slotches um yeah, his leg, he, his leg kick's a beast man gonzaga's biggest thing if gonzaga comes into this fight confident with a smart game plan, I, I could definitely see him win this fight. The thing about Stipe is when you talk about heavyweights, you want to see an athletic heavyweight. The guy who's going to dominate most other big-time heavyweights yeah. is a guy who's athletic. Yeah. Well, Stipe is very athletic. Very he athletic. wrestled at Cleveland State. He's quick. He played basketball or baseball, so he's a Division One wrestler and baseball player. God. That's crazy. He also did Golden Gloves boxing. Um, Stipe, you know, I, I brought him in for two or three of my camps. Me and that guy have gone to war. People would stop and watch me and Stipe spar. Really? Oh, yeah. And does he, how are his kicks? Uh, you know, he's not a big kicker. He's, yeah. he's not a big kicker. He, he has really fast hands. So it's going to come down to, first of all, he's faster than Gonzaga. But it's going to come down he's to whether or not. He's faster than Gonzaga. His jiu-jitsu is not as good. His, this is the thing about Gonzaga. When I fought Gonzaga... Two or three days before I fought him, I'm in Anaheim, California, um, uh, and I was I was fighting him on the same card as uh, Lesnar, Cain Velasquez in uh, Orange County. And three days before, I'm signing po- posters, and I don't know if someone meant to do this or what. I think Forrest Griffin said this. He goes, he's talking to someone to interview behind me. He doesn't know I'm in front of him. And they go, who's one of the best wrestlers you've ever seen? He goes, well, for this camp, we had Gabriel Gonzaga, Extreme Couture's, and I saw national champions. I saw world-class wrestlers just get destroyed by this guy wrestling. Wow. And I hear this, I go, huh? I mean, I knew he was 
legit wrestler, grappler, but when I heard that, I got nervous as shit. God, I would too. Yeah, I was like, oh, That's no. not fun at all. And then I thought Gonzaga, when we fought, would try and take me down more. He might have tried two or three times, just got shut down. Um, yeah. I beat him in decision, but all stand-up. And then you got. And the thing is, when you take Gonzaga down, you got to remember, he's a world-class jiu-jitsu player. He's a world champion jiu-jitsu I, player. I didn't know that. I did not. A lot know of people that. don't, and you've seen recently. I the, always the thought re- of Gonzaga as a striker, yeah, not, because not, of the crow cop kick, and right? That, people yeah, forget, and he's that good at. at you got to remember too, uh, Gonzaga. Yeah. The reason he's on this, I think, seven fight win streak, and his last loss was to me, is because now he's using his skills. He's using his ground skills. You see him win a lot by submission now. Well, so so here's so if you're you know what. Correction, he lost his last loss was Travis Brown to those elbows, those illegal elbows, I thought, uh, to the back of the head. That was his last loss, okay. not me. I made a mistake. But as far as straight losing, it was right. to me. Right. Well, so, so, so here's my question to you. Um, my feeling is that if it goes to the ground, um, Gonzaga has the advantage. If Gonzaga's if, on if, top, if Stipe has very good Stipe defense. Stipe hasn't worked on if, – if he, if he leaves himself vulnerable, he can get his legs kicked out from under him, and that's going to make a difference in the fight and take your energy away. But Stipe's much faster. He's more explosive. More athletic for sure. And I don't know if his hands are better. I don't know if his footwork and his uh, boxing and his Stipe's, striking is Stipe's better. Stipe's – Pure striking as far as head movement, angles, is better than Gonzaga's. Okay. Gonzaga has a lot more knockout power. He does? He does. Really? Even Gonzaga's, though he's slower? He's slower? Yeah, that doesn't mean shit. I mean, Shane Carwin's slower than me, and he has the har- heaviest hands ever in the UFC. Um, so let me ask you this. How would you – what is the game plan for Stipe if you're training him? What's the game plan for Gonzaga? Well, I'd put on the Brendan Schaub-Gonzaga uh, fight and – just emulate that. Just that right? I just use a long jab and jab his face off and use the right hand when he goes to kick. Avoid the takedown. That's it. Yeah. And just eat those and, 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 and set Gonzaga up and, and look for the knockout. Do you when, he fought, sh- when he fought Dos Santos, Dos Santos knocked him out, I think, in the, late in the first round from a kick, left hook. And that's what – when I saw that, then, then I knew to, to – you know, when he threw the leg kick, I was going to counter the left hook because it was successful prior Is to Stipe me. Is Stipe as long as you are? Uh, we're very similar. I think Stipe six. May, he might be a little shorter than me, but probably similar reach. Um, really, very similar builds. Yeah. How about, how about Pedro Hizo? I mean, uh, how about Gonzaga? Whoa, Gabriel, Gabriel Gonzaga. <laughs> I always confuse. Those wow, two. always wow, confuse. Pedro Hizo. Um, Gonzaga's bigger. He's a thicker dude. Gonzaga come in probably two fifty five. When I found wow. him, two fifty five. Thick dude. Man. Strong. Strong. Yeah. Not the strongest I've ever. Krokop's the strongest guy you've ever. Yeah, hands down. Really? Yeah. So who are you taking this fight, brother? If you had to pick. I am very I'm I just I don't know. I don't know. I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go Gonzaga. I like it. And I'm gonna go Gonzaga because he's on a tear and that, I don't know. Yeah. I'm just gonna it's go such I, I don't know what the odds are. Do you know the odds, producer DJ? <sighs> Um, let's look up those odds. We get back. Uh, that's that's a great fight. That's that's ugh, that fight's definitely. But does not going either to one of them have something the other one doesn't? Gonzaga's can't ground prepare game's for. the X factor. That's the X factor. If Gonzaga's head and ground game's the X factor. If really? Gonzaga comes in confident and with a good game plan, he is a handful, yeah. a handful for anyone in the world. How many fights has Stipe had? I think he's ten and one. His a loss, lot. his one loss was Struve. Not a lot. That's who has he fought? He's fought Del Rosio. Del, yeah. What Del Rosio. big names has he fought? He fought Roy Nelson. It was kind of a, you know, I think Roy had the flu or something like that, but he picked Roy apart. Yeah. A, a decision. Okay. So his, his one big win's Roy. And then, um, he, then he, lost, yeah, he, lost, he got knocked out by Struve, kind of gas, got knocked out by Struve. So he hasn't, he hasn't necessarily fought the top tier fighters. Not, I mean, Gonzaga no. has, by the way. Gonzaga's fought the very best of the and, best, and and Stipe has not. No, it's so, a vet versus a young cat. And you can also look really good against guys that are not quite in the top ten, right? True, true. He, he has, this so would be gonna, his toughest test for I'm sure. I'm going to go with Gonzaga. All right. Um, I don't think anyone's mad at that pick. Okay. Um, obviously, here I'll ask you just for your freaking opinion, for the sake of it. Cerrone versus Martin. Um, 
I don't know a ton about Martins. I know he's I really. Know. I know he's good at. I know he's really good at jujitsu. Um, listen, if Cowboy comes with the right mind for, frame of mind and he comes, you know, to fight, he's going to destroy this cat. The only person it's I kind of a risk saw. for Donald, right? Like Donald's a big name. This Martins guy is kind of you know you've never heard of him. Yeah, big well, opportunity for Martins. Well, the 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 I've never actually I've never seen the only person I ever saw beat or best Donald Cerrone. I mean, Anthony Pettis kicked him in the, in the that's a that's a liver shot, you know. And Anthony Pettis is great. But um I, he, when he's clicking, man, um Cerrone just seems so relaxed standing up. His ability to pick you apart, kick you with those front kicks. Yeah, if he, he gets going, he's a handful. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, I'm obviously going to go with Cowboy because he's my boy. Obviously, we're both going with yeah. Cowboy. I'll say I'll say Cowboy uh first round KO. Really? How about that? First round KO. First round KO. I don't know. Cowboy's a slow starter. Yeah, that's why I'm not. What are you going with? Um, I don't know enough about Adriano Martins. I just don't. And I don't know if he's fought the level of competition that Donald Cerrone is at. No, no. DJ, I'm, can you look up who he's fought? No, Adriano no, Martins? I'm going to do you a solid. He hasn't. You've never heard of him. Well, there you, you go. You would know. Plus 175 on the line as well. So. Yeah. So, you know, listen. It so, might, nothing's an easy night for anybody, but, but Donald, I think, has got this. I'm with you. Donald wins this. KO. I'm going to say early, but he's a slow starter, but I just think, I don't know. Hey, listen, it's a Donald's lot for Martins shape. to chew yeah. off. Yeah. Uh, so Stipe is basically a two-to-one favorite over at Gonzaga. Really? Minus 230. That's impressive. I'm still going I think it's going to be closer than that. Yeah, I think it's going to be closer than people think. But yeah, yeah because, wouldn't it be a surprise if he wins? Yeah, I, I don't know. I just haven't seen him fight the level of competition Gonzaga has. So I'm gonna go. With, I can uh, see that. Gonzaga. It's a good card. It's on Big Fox. Big Fox, 5 p.m. Uh, we will be so much in. of this. You'll you'll be in Austin. I'll be in Austin, Texas. What are you oh, doing I'll be in, in Austin? Austin, Texas, doing stand up? Hey, I'll be at Austin, Texas. Gap Hook City. 'em Horns Bar. Gap City. I'll be down there. Come see me. We're giving out Kool Aid and <laughs> Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> Thursday. I don't know why I crashed that when you do that. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Brian the Kid Callum doing stand up. Bring your bring your seatbelts. I am gonna be hilarious. Go down there and harass Brian. Please yell out Big Brown in the crowd. Big Give me a Brown. shout out. I get that sometimes. Tell Big Brown I say hi. <laughs> Do you it's really? Great. Yeah. It's love great. it, man. I love it. Love it. It's amazing. This is my thing, Brian. Yeah. We you and I've talked about this off air. The chances of someone who we deal with all the time, I deal with in my business, you deal with in your business, me being a fighter, you being freaking in comedy. comedy, acting, the chances of someone making it is not good. Well, yeah. I, I, I meet guys who, who come to my show and say they're in the MMA and they're trying to go pro, and I look at them. And I ask him Wait, they come, they come to your comedy show and say yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. And I'll ask them, oh, I'm a purple belt in jiu-jitsu, and, and I'm, I've been doing some boxing, and I just want to go, what? that's such a hard life. Please don't do it unless you're really talented and you really want it. You know, I don't say that to them, but, oh, man. That's, how how that's can I'm you? Thinking. I'm always this like, is my thing. Like, like the other day, I was at Firehouse. I go there all the time. Healthy food in, in Venice. Um, it's by Gold's Gym. And I have the same waitress every time I go there, right? She's always there. Pretty girl, um, super outgoing. And finally, um, I ask her, I go, what, what do you do? Because you can tell the girl has skills. I'm like, what do you do? She's like, oh, I'm trying to be an actress. Ugh. I go, oh, that's, that's cool. She's been here for six years. Yeah. Six years yeah. doing the same thing, going on auditions. But this is the problem. And this is the problem with professional sports, with celebrities. These people you see on TV are the exception to the rule. Yeah. They're the exception. Yeah. So like this girl, I go, oh, that's cool. And then she tells me how long she's been doing it, blah, blah, blah. And she goes, yeah, but Morgan Freeman, he worked in a coffee shop. Oh, no. And then he made it. No, no, no. Well, Morgan Freeman's the exception. Yeah, that's a really bad. But at, at what it's point? It's a bad marker. It's a bad measuring stick. You don't want to measure. You don't want, you don't want Morgan Freeman or anybody like that being your measuring stick. And you can't even think about that. You got to be honest with yourself. Honest with yourself, first of all. Are you, do you have the tools? Do you have the hardware? Secondly, are you willing to do what it takes? And are you doing what it takes? Most people aren't. Most people spend a lot of time doing everything but what they're supposed to do. What do you mean? Explain. Well, 
I, I know a number of, I'll have people come to me and say, can you help me with my acting career or something? And I always go, oh boy. So what I always do, the first thing I do if they want help is I, I find usually at least, and I'm not kidding, 10 things they are doing in their life. Like a to, waste of time? To ensure their failure. Like, well, the, for, oh, I don't know, from the guy they're dating who's, who's completely controlling and makes them unhappy to, mm. to, uh, to the job they've taken, which lets them, has them working, you know, 13 hours a day, to um, the way they're dressing and, and eating and not feeling good, and a thousand things. To the people they're surrounding themselves with, to the fact that they're not taking acting class and instead they're in, they're in two exercise classes as opposed to the other thing. Well, so, you, you, told, you told me this off air you have a friend who's been doing at it for 20 years and yeah. just decide to retire yeah tell tell him this story yeah the, he's he's been doing it for 20 years and he's a good actor and the problem with being just a good actor which he, means, so he moved to la 20 years ago and has been pursuing acting yes and they got zero roles basically little things here and there little things and and just sat in class and uh, took jobs, you know, support whatever class and being this actor. And he's finally going back to Europe. He's like, I got to go back he, to Europe. He's from Europe? Yeah, he's from, like, I don't know where he's from. Yeah, like. Now, you like, as a friend. Yeah. Do you think after eight years and yeah. he booked zero roles, you could have said, hey, bro, might be time to go back to Europe? I don't Do you it. think after I, six years I don't with zero it. income, I you could say, bro. Maybe my time to I did. pack I, up. I told a buddy of mine who had a landscaping business. I looked at him and I said, you've been out here how long? He goes, 15 years. I go, do you have an agent? He said, no. I said, <laughs> you know that you're not going to be an actor, right? He said, well. Uh, That's your opinion? I, I, no, he said, he looked at me and he goes, I've been thinking about that. I said, well, this is how it works. You're now 40. Nobody is going to take a bet on you. I mean, maybe there's an ex- you have a better chance of being a senator. You, you just do. I said, so, <laughs> you said this to him? Yes. I said, so go, because he wasn't, he's, he was an okay, quote unquote, actor. If you're really funny and you can do comedy, you have a lot more options. If you're just an actor, who are you going to play? A cop on a one hour? Nah, there are too many other cops. On this one is the thing. You, you need to get that. You need to gather your most talented friends and get him in the same room. Well, like, no, I, I, what he do did you, to his Who credit, doesn't belong here? To his credit, he goes, he listens to me. And I said, Go get involved in your landscaping business, have a life, make money, buy a house. And acting should be plan B. And yeah, it'd be do plays. Do something as a hobby. To fill the Don't void. try to make it your life, man. It's not working <sighs> out. I'm never gonna run punts back in the NFL. I'm never gonna be in the Octagon. Well, never say never. Right. Invincible. Exactly. I don't have the tools. I've known that since I was fourteen. It's fine. Choose something else. No, this what is you're good this at. is my thing, though, Brian. At what point? At at some point in everyone's life, in, in, unless you're a professional athlete, celebrity, or doing what you dream, you're a vet, you're a fire, uh, you know, whatever you want to do. Right. At some point, everyone stops dreaming. They stop doing what they're. And at, this well, is yeah. This, at some point, reality punches you in the face. But why? Because because financial is that why? Yeah. This is what this you is what we're exhausted. talking about. My buddy, my buddy's exhausted. He's at least he oh, can say after twenty years he's well, exhausted. And at least he no can say, shit. You know what's really sad though is when you don't try and you. Have That's, to what your whole life. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So so. Oh, it, it's a double edged sword. I've had people it come is. up to me. I get all the time. I've had guys come up to me go. Even football players, former football players, going, man, you know, I'm, I, I think I want to do what you do. And first of all, that's insulting. They go, I want to do what you do, blah blah. blah. I'm not doing anything. They're crazy out of shape. They have zero martial art background. They've never even and, seen the UFC. How old are they? they just want to fight. Yeah, mid thirties. That's a bad it's idea. It's insulting. But but who am I to tell them no? But at the same point, at the same time, I want to be like, bro, don't waste your time, man. But this I do say that. You. But but this is my thing. You being a UFC fighter was not your dream. It's a backup plan because you didn't make it or now it's just an idea you came up with. I'm talking about a pure dream. Look, I've had, I've had very successful and very wealthy. 16, 16 year old kid comes up to you. Yeah. He comes up to you and goes, Brian. Very different. I want, yeah. I want to be the next Sean Penn. He's 16. What do you say? He's 16. I, I go for it. Go for it. Go for it. If you're 18, go for it. If what? you're 21, go for it. It, what, no if I, what if I'm what if I'm 28? Um, now you're getting into now you're getting a little late in the game because you're in the second quarter. Of I life. gotta see what who you are and why you're doing this and what the real reason is and you know talent is a weird thing but you know you you you've just gotta 
what I say to people always is I say, look, first of all, what makes you want to do this? Why? I want to know the reason you decided now you want to be. All right, all right. So, so, so I'm the. Let's say I'm the 28 year old actor kid. Yeah. I go and I've seen this happen to you. I'll tell that story yeah. when we were down uh, lunch yeah. in San. But Monica. I've had more. Than so, that. so let's play this. I'm the 28 year old actor kid. I see you in a restaurant. Uh, I'm but but can I just can I couch it? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll up to you. But hold on, what's up? Because you've seen this happen. But but it's more than that. It's more than that. Because a lot of it's this. A lot of it's this. A lot of it's this. Somebody goes, I'm a salesman and a successful one. I knew a really successful computer salesman making a million dollars a year. He goes, Dude, I want to act. I said, Why? He goes, Dude, I act all day anyway. That's what I do. I uh, sell. Oh, no, you no. don't. No, no, you no, don't. no, no. It's very different. <laughs> well, I'm not talking I, about I wrestled, Slappy McGee I wrestled here. in high school. It doesn't mean I can, I can do I'm not MMA. talking about. I'm not talking about pursuit of happiness. Will Smith's slanging right. freaking computers right, here. Dude. Pursuing acting, right. man. I'm not doing. I, exactly. So Bri- Brian, and I go to, Brian and I go to a restaurant off Santa Monica, or in Santa Monica, off Montana. And there's a young comedian there. Pretty, he's in his mid-20s. Yeah. He's young. Every time we go on there, he'll he'll go up to Brian and he pressures you. He sends you emails yeah, weekly yeah. and he pressures you to I come to a show. I don't mind that because he's 24 and 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 th- th- it, there's no reason why he couldn't be a really if he's funny, couldn't be a really good comic by the time he's 33. Yeah. So that's a different So because the, there's potential. Yes. Just not that, potential. that kid I say go for it. I like that he emails me because he's got a lot of like drive and he and he's not he's not overbearing about it. He's he just not. He's cool. Me. You're yeah. you're like his hero. Yeah, or whatever. Or he, I mean, he could know. give us a discount on that freaking chicken sandwich with yeah. whatever. I know if my hero came to the damn restaurant right. and, I, and I'll give him a discount. <laughs> exactly. There's your problem, kid. You're not pulling the right strings. Give How us would a discount you, on the chicken. You, you want, give us a free iced tea. How about exactly. that? Do exactly. something so exactly. we remember you. Exactly. But now when I go in there by myself, he'll come up to me, hey, you talked to Brian lately? I'm like, yeah, man, I did the podcast with him this morning. Yeah, yeah. You know, I sent him an email and I sent him some dick pics and I haven't heard back from him. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know, man. I don't know, man. <laughs> Look, man, he's he's a good kid. That's a different story. That's that's a young. Yeah, well, now kid. you're talking about potential. Yeah, There's a you're big talking difference. about 24. You're talking about different. Mid this, this is my thing with no. potential. I've seen some of the most badass dudes not make it to the UFC. Some of the toughest, most well-rounded, talented dudes yeah. in the world yeah. not get into the UFC and their career passing by, and now they're doing Why? something else. Why performance they, anxiety? Nope. No, it might you know it could be performance anxiety, but it's at the same time, it could be a lot of things. Well, they just didn't get the opportunity. That yeah. the, they just never got the call. And then when I see a guy with no potential who thinks he's going to make it, yeah. those are the guys you want to be like, listen, bro, L- listen, man. You know, those well, are the guys I, you, you want to do a solid. I think you can do them a solid by asking them the right questions. A lot of times, yeah, I'll it's say, it's not my spot. I, 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 I feel like it's it's an, it's not my job. You know, I, I always often find people like that when I really start asking them why they want to do it, they can't answer me. That's not good. And, 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 I, and I start asking them why, and they, they, have an, they, have a, they start talking in very weird, broad terms. And I go, They get oh, nervous. You have an idea of what you want to be. They based get nervous. On what you've seen. Yeah, yeah they're, they're doing it based on what, you gotta, what people want. <laughs> you got to love the thing of it. You like, got to love the thing itself, right? You love jujitsu, you love boxing. You would do it anyway, in a way. Well, I do it for you free. You do it every day 100%. because you don't feel right when you're not doing it. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what to do. When That's I'm not doing very it important. I think, I think having a passion for the activity itself is very, very important. And you can see it with fighters who start to lose it. I would argue that part of GSP's issue was that he done everything he wanted in the octagon what more do you want from this guy how do you keep that fire he's a very smart guy if indeed he's having memory loss or whatever it is there's no upside to that guy stepping back in there with those killers i agree there's no <laughs> worse sport to be in, in the world than when you don't have fire for it yeah. if you don't have the passion the same drive as your opponent it's not like you know and this is no knock on football or basketball don't i'm not even gonna mention tennis but it's it, there's just it, in basketball, football, baseball, listen, if I don't have the fire, but I'm making 14, 17 million a, a year, I can kind of go through the motions. Sure. I might get cut at the end of uh, the season. For $17 I can go million? Through the, of yeah, course. for sure, right? Yes. In the UFC, if you go through the motions and you don't put everything you have into this camp and this fight, and you got to be relentless, you're going to go into that cage and get exposed. 
exposed. Yeah. Because there, there's there's no 10 other guys helping you out on the field. And you're also going to get exposed in a very dangerous way. You, yeah, you're going to get hurt. You know, I'm not going to strike out. I'm not going to strike out. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, drop the football or throw an interception. No, you can get knocked out. You're, you're going to get seriously injured, man. Yeah, that's, that's So exactly when you don't have the fire, it's like, yeah, I'm out. Bring it. Yeah, you gotta Are we good it. over there, DJ? DJ's, okay. DJ's playing with the board like maybe we've lost. He's, he's making. He worries me, man. Right. He worries me because I can't hear too much in my. But earphones. that's a that's a very good point. You cannot you cannot have one foot in one foot out. You got to be in anything in, in yeah. anything. But no especially Brian. in anything in, the in octagon, life. Especially no, in the octagon. In the octagon, yes, get hurt because badly. we're talking about fighting. But really, in anything you do, you have to be two feet in. The, this goes with all aspects of life, relationship, right? Well. Yes, I agree with Sports, you. Sports, yes. career, you gotta, I mean, diet. There's, there's no, ah, I'm on a diet. No, 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 no. You're either 100% in or you're not. Well, there's also moderation and you can, you can have some balance. Now, how many see, of your guys, how many of your opponents um, tested positive for steroids? Well, Brian, that's an interesting question. Are you trying to get me fired from the UFC? No, but I, I, I was just thinking about this and looking at your... Have, have ever in their career? Yeah. Um, in these, let's see, uh, my record seven three in the UFC. I think five, at least five have Interesting. at some point. Interesting. I was just thinking about because with with steroids being so rampant in other sports, if you're going to pay me seventeen million dollars, which is going to extend my career two years, I'm doing steroids right now. <laughs> I don't condone this. Brendan Chavit does right not now. condone this. I want nothing to do with this. However. If you look at the guy like um, who, 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 what's his name, Braun, the guy who won MVP for the Milwaukee Brewers. Braun was an average baseball player, and at, he was good. He was solid. He wasn't a you know he wasn't a superstar. Mm. Does steroids wins MVP throws everyone under the bus, signs a hundred forty million dollar contract guaranteed no matter what it's guaranteed. Wow. wow. He gets caught, gets suspended for a season. This dude's in Costa Rica right now with his hundred forty million dollars, laughing at all of us. God. So let me tell you something, Brian. If someone came up to you and said, Brian. If you take this pill, you will be the next uh, – who's just killing it right now? You'll be the next Sean Penn. Yeah. If you take this pill, you're Sean Penn. Yeah. If you get caught, though, you won't be able to act for a year. Would you do it? Sign me up. <laughs> here's, my, here's my ass. Stick a needle in it. Oh, man. Okay. That is a dangerous And I'll look play. better and put on more muscle. What? Yeah. <clears throat> and, and, and play the game I love for another five years, an extra five years. Yeah. You, 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 you're you're going to lose some fan likableness. Oh, really? That's a word. Likableness. Shucks. But when I'm hitting home Oh, runs. really? Shucks. When I'm hitting home I, my runs. bank account is fat. Yeah. How about this? Yeah. So, so I'll buy friends. I'll give them a raise. Th- this, and this is my thing with Lance Armstrong. So you're Lance Armstrong. When they stripped him of his title, they had to go down to 15th place to find a guy who didn't test positive before. <laughs> my Listen, problem- you're in a, if he's, it's a level, level playing field. This is, my th- this is why I yeah. think Barry Bonds, Mark McGuire, all those guys should go to the Hall of Fame. Everyone is on that crap. Yeah, that's true. It's a level playing field. My only Lance issue. Armstrong was on it. Yeah. All his opponents were on it. I have a He's just that Armstrong. much better. No, What's have, your problem with Lance my Armstrong? My problem with Lance Armstrong What's your P- is P's and Q's because he's a very, not, very strong man. He listen, has his hand over L.A. Listen, listen. My problem with Lance Armstrong is not that he did steroids. My problem with any athlete is not that they did steroids. I never care about that. It's that they got caught. It's not that they got caught. What is it? That it's he that lied? If you get caught and you throw other people under the bus mm. and sue other people and try to ruin their life like because A-Rod. they told the truth about you. Now I have a big problem with your character. And I, 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 know, I can tell you right now for $140 million, I would not do that. I, don't, I can't live with myself. I don't know if I believe that, Brian. I could not live with myself. To, to drag other people down and destroy them and, and sue them. Yeah, screw that is, that, is, that is a sociopath. <clears throat> That's why he's so intensely disliked. Listen, That's I, why I got nothing. I, I, I know a lot of people who know Lance Armstrong. I've met him. I've met him once myself. I've never heard one good thing about the there guy. There you go. Never in my life. Anyone go. who ever met him said that guy's a prick. There you go. I'm talking about the nice people I know, too. I have no reason. Who aren't haters. I have no They just doubt. go, man, he is not a good Don't guy. Don't like him. Nobody and, likes but him. But this, this is the thing. This is why he's so screwed because th- he would have got away with it. We would still, we'd probably have hanging up a Lance Armstrong yellow jersey in our Fox studio right, right now. Right. However, he was such a prick and mean and intimidated and was a bully yeah. that as soon as people could get the word out that he was a prick, yeah. They did it. He bullies me. I'll beat his ass right now. Ooh, I don't right know if you now. beat. No, nope, no. Nope. Right now, I'll beat his ass. You'll beat Lance Armstrong I'll up? I'll beat him up. God, I just feel like he, he's tougher than you. He is tougher, and he's stronger. I'll beat him up. I'm a better fighter. 
I'll choke him out or I'll punch him in the face or I'll kick him really hard. You think? Yeah, I do think. I don't think. I know. I'll beat him up. Don't let him train, though, because he's a really good athlete. But right now, in his bike shoes, I'll beat his ass. In his bike shoes, beat his ass, I'll all clicking around on the pavement? Yeah, I'll beat him up. You're going to hit him with that spinning back I don't kick? like him. Okay? I don't like him. I don't think he's a good guy. He's so, not a good guy. So he better pack a lunch if he wants to fight me. How about- I'm 170 pounds, dude, and I got the eye of the tiger. <laughs> I feel like he- I've got the eye of the tiger. Have we covered the fights, dude? Yeah, we covered the fights. Not much to talk can, about. Can I, well, let, let, me, let me tell my L.A. Chinese story for Tony Jeffries. Oh, yeah. How about this? Oh, man, where do I start? So, Tony Jeffries. Well, this was your Saturday night. This is, my, this, is my, this is one of my Saturday nights in L.A. How, so, Tony Jeffries, his wife is pregnant. They wanted me to go to some boxing uh, some big boxing match in downtown LA his wife's pregnant she's starving i didn't want to go they wanted me to go with them they convinced me they convinced me to go right right they convinced me to go and the way they got me to go she goes listen they have the greatest chinese food you've ever had in downtown LA we'll bring you there first and then we'll take you to the fights i'm fat i'm a fat kid at heart i'm all right i'll go right <laughs> I have a very fine palate. You know this, Brian. It's yes. because of you. You brought me You're to the finest You're restaurants of Abbey Kenny. Yep. I'm a foodie. Yep. Don't bring me some bullshit yep. and not expect to hear about it nonstop, and I'm going to blast it. I'm like TMZ. You're going to hear about it on my podcast, yep. on UFC Now, yep. on Twitter, on Instagram. Do not screw me over with food. So they bring me this Chinese place. When we pull up, there is a neon sign that says something like, Panda, uh, golden panda, panda, golden extreme Chinese, oh. a pure neon sign downtown LA. Yeah, right away I'm like, oh no. First of all, you're already downtown. I hate it down there, but anyway, keep it, going. well they're doing better things yeah, there. Anyways, so right when we pull up, I'm thinking to myself, oh hell no. And they're like, don't be a hater. You're so negative on food. Blah blah. I'm like, I'm not negative. I just hate bad crappy food. Don't right. bring me a crappy food. Right, right. Before we park. As I'm walking around to the building with Tony and Sarah, I'm not making. You can call it stereotype, whatever you want to call it. This is true story. There's cats everywhere. There's cats in the restaurant. Not in the restaurant. To open the door, I have to clear a cat out of my way. Really? I'm not making this up. Cats are scurrying all over the place. Are you suggesting that that they were? Cooking cat at that restaurant? <laughs> I don't know, but is the sweet and sour chicken, sweet and sour kitten. That's all I'm going to tell you. Sweet and sour kitten? Sweet and sour it kitten. like sweet and sour kitten? Dude, sir. So, so I open up the door. This cat went, row, row, <laughs> runs off, right? I'm like, this cannot be a good sign. As we sit down, the, we're the only white people in the place. Everyone else is full-blown Asian. Yeah. Not, I mean, no English. Yeah, you're, the, you're, one, the one English sign... On the wall, it, it, it'd be like it'd be tough for me to write here on a piece of paper. They took a Crayola marker or what a crayon and wrote "Pay cash, big discount." A crayon, a crayon, crayon, crayon. You don't. You. I've never heard an accent like yours, and I'm an actor. Crayon, <laughs> crayon. <laughs> so, so, so is they that, is that crayon for us? So they write "Pay cash, get discount" in crayon. <laughs> Pay cash, get discount in in Kren. Yes. <laughs> wow. So right away, I'm like, oh, this is nice. And Tony's like, I knew we shouldn't have brought you here. We knew you were going to. This is one of our favorite restaurants. I'm like, all right, man, whatever. I'll be cool. I'll be cool. I, I, I would have been the same way. I ordered bottled water. I'm not drinking their water, right? I'm a yeah. freaking. I ordered bottled water. I like hot and sour soup. I'm like, God, it seems cheap. Six dollars for hot and sour soup. They're like, yes, you, is that what you want? Hot and sour soup? I'm like, yes. It's a good Chinese accent. Thanks, dog. Like. They, is that what you want? <laughs> <laughs> really good. Great. So accent. so they bring it. I'm not making this up. It comes in a gallon. Literally a gallon for the table. Ah. That's how you know it's a bad sign. Yeah. Six dollars for this Costco. Which which has been cooking for about five hours. And no one else ordered it. Yeah. And it just tastes Throw like, another kitty in there. Yeah. Just tastes like Pure piss. It tastes like I opened my mouth, they pissed into my tongue, and threw tofu into it while someone was pissing my mouth. That's how bad this place was. So right away, I'm like, oh, hell no. Tony's like... This is what I call a good Yelp review. Yeah, right? So Tony's like, well, no, don't worry, man. The sweet and sour kitten's delicious and the sweet and sour pork and all this. So they order all this stuff for the table. It came out 
slimy, oh, God. slimy beef, oh. slimy beef. The 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 cat, the broccoli was almost that. a brown color. Kitten, kitten and broccoli is kitten is always, and broccoli is got, not fun. It's always got a silicone film to it. And and the sweet and sour kitten and the and the. I don't, the other thing we were like sesame kitten, it had it. It looked like deep fried crow's feet. It it literally looked like feet, because it bird's was, feet. Because it, it was. might have been yeah pigeon. It was pigeon. It, it was pigeon. It harvested pigeon. So we ate, I, I I barely touched the food. They devoured it. You got to remember Tony and his wife from England. They don't know good food. I'm gonna go ahead and say that they have really really bad. Palettes. Well, they're from England. They're from the north of England. I felt awful. It's not, I, it's not the culinary, you know, capital of the world. Oh, and they and the and the restaurant could not wait for us to get out. How about I didn't pay in cash? How about no? How about I didn't want to give you a discount? You take my credit card and like it. You're gonna take my credit card and I'm gonna get the hell out of here. You sure, it wasn't called Cats, bro. I felt sick, man. Worst That's restaurant terrible. I've ever been to in my life. That's terrible. Cats everywhere. That's terrible. Look it up. You know what? The way to find it, go downtown if you're looking for a cat. Or you're looking for a good sweet and sour kitten? Go find this place. Don't adopt a cat. Drive down to downtown LA. Look for this weird panda royalty pink neon sign. And there's cats everywhere. <laughs> sounds like an adult. It sounds like an adult store. Like a oh, sex toy store. oh, guess what? There right are your massages in the back. Ah, oh, you want sweet and sour kitten? You want sweet sour kitten? No wonder. And you want me to jack you off? No wonder it's so sweet and sour slimy. kitten. Me jack you off? Oh, I'm getting turned on. Don't go there. I got a stomach ache, but I came. Um, hey, t- tell do you do you have, do you have someone clean your place? Does someone clean your house? Yeah, you have maids, right? I not maids, but I have one. Woman. You have a cleaning lady. Comes once I have a week. cleaning team. Oh, yeah. I have, it's 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 a family of three come to my place and clean my That's my great. one bedroom oceanfront property because I'm lazy as hell. I just don't want to do it, and you got to keep I'm it the clean. same way though. Tell me this. Tell me if I'm out of line here. <laughs> this is this is ridiculous. This just happened this morning. They come and I go, or they text me the night before. They go, "Hey, we're gonna be that eleven, or we're gonna be that 10. I go, "Ah, I, I, you know, I'd appreciate if you come at eleven thirty. I don't want to be there when they're there. I like to relax. I yeah. like drink my coffee in the, mo- mo- in the morning, watch Fox Sports One Sports, right? Yeah. So I go, "Ah, it'd be better if you came at 11. They don't text me back. They come at ten thirty when I'm still there in my under underwear, drinking coffee. I'm pissed, right? I go, huh, I thought I told you to come at 11 that she goes, I'm not making this up. She goes, yeah, you got to realize it's not always what you want. Sometimes you got to compromise. She barely speaks English. Someone told her to say this. She goes, it's not about what you want in your schedule. Sometimes you have to compromise. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what? What are we doing? I'm now, hiring you. Somebody told her to say. Someone that. told her to say and that. It was lost in translation. She no, had no, no idea what not, it means. She, she didn't. Yeah, she didn't know what she was saying. I don't <laughs> think, or maybe she did. <laughs> she goes, "It's not about your schedule and what you want all the time. Sometimes you have to compromise." You know what though? They probably stack up a bunch of cleaning dates, so they that that throws them off. I don't give a. F- they probably have to I'm paying you to clean buses. my place. You're gonna do it. When I tell you, I'm going to find someone. That's How about hilarious. that? Don't fire him. I like the family. I like him too. I didn't fire him. And then tell me this. That's Does hilarious. your clean? Yeah, isn't that great? Then your cleaning service, do they charge you for cleaning supplies? Like they go, oh, listen, it's going to be $25 oh, extra because oh, we, have, yeah. to buy, oh, we yeah. have to buy paper towels and Windex. Oh, yeah. yeah. Isn't that included no, in the fee? No, no. Am I right, producer DJ? No, no it's not. You no. pay for the supplies? We always have supplies. They're not going to bring their own supplies. Bro, that's like paying a, a masseuse to come to your house no. and being like, listen, I'm going to have to charge you for the supplies rental on my table. They're expensive. They, they wouldn't make money if, they, if you don't pay for the supplies. We don't pay for ours. They well, bring theirs. I don't know, man. That's expensive. I'd want them to have. You should have your own supplies anyway because they can use really cheap, toxic stuff. Have your own supplies. I don't give a crap. Just hey, clean man. my place, man. No, and would... don't give me lip. Clean my place and don't sometimes, give me lip. Sometimes. sometimes it's not about your schedule. It's not about your schedule. I started laughing. I couldn't <laughs> stop. I, I started laughing. And I go, I started laughing. I go, no, did someone tell you to say that? And they're like, no. I'm like, someone told you to say that? No. All right, well, listen. You're going to be here at 11 from now on. Do not ever come before 11. You're going to see some weird stuff come before 11. <laughs> don't ever, ever you're come gonna, before you're 11. You're going to see some weird stuff. You're going to see stuff. some stuff, and you're going to judge me. Don't big, ever come here before 11. on the couch. Balls deep. <laughs> Balls deep. Watching sports. Balls, Balls deep, deep and some bulletproof coffee. Ah, oh, drinking coffee and balls deep. Now, by the way, how much time have we have we got? Five minutes. Let's. I want to spend this five minutes creating. The Sunday is a huge day. It's a huge. It's day. a huge day. It was the day 
Brian Callen was brought to this earth. That's right. You will be 57 years old. I'll be 57 years old, ladies and gentlemen. 57. I look 47. He will actually be 47, which is still hard to believe. 47. But although I, I'm telling this story, you have dots all over your body. You know what, man? It got better, and then I didn't get much sleep, and it came back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need my sleep. Otherwise, you I need your sleep. sleep. Otherwise, otherwise my, you have chicken box. Otherwise, my darn psoriasis comes. Dude, back I thought you got makeup all over it. No, I it was. It's gotten better though. I think, sort of. Ah, you look horrible. Anyways, he's like, get a doctor. I'm not going to the doctor. Your your birthday. So you get back from you leave from Dude, Austin back on you, Sunday. You, we're, we're playing volleyball on the beach. Then we're going to dinner at Scopa. I think. Do we'll you, figure it out. Do, and now, do I need to set this up, or are other people no, doing people this? Involved. Just be there. I'll be there. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna just make. I'm just gonna invite. You know, just the handful of us, and we'll get a we'll group. Dinner. We'll get a group for your okay. birthday. I'm gonna get you some new workout clothes because you look like a dork. I need some new workout. You look like clothes. a dork. I that know. don't let your tennis instructor dress you in the morning. Come How on, about man. that? I'm playing tennis today. You know, you should come watch me. No, I get I get crap to do, man. And I gotta fly. I'm headed off. straight to Burbank to film UFC now. Oh. Two shows back to back. Really? How yeah. long does that take you? Uh, we get, we do a production meeting. I I probably won't get done to seven eight o'clock tonight. Really? Yeah. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. UFC now. Watch that. This has been the fighter and the kid, and I'm on my way to Austin. You want to you want to laugh? If you're you say Boston, in Austin. If you're anywhere, you say in Boston, Texas, Austin. If you're anywhere in the te- if you're if you're anywhere, Boston, in, Austin. If you're anywhere in the Texas area, Massachusetts, you, Boston, Massachusetts, Austin. If you're ever if you're ever anywhere in the hey everybody, if you're a Red Sox fan, come no, on down, watch no, Brian in Boston. No, 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 no it's Austin. He's gonna be giving out fish, no, no. fish and giggles, no, 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 it's Austin. fish and giggles, it's Austin, Texas, fish man. and giggles, Cap cities, bro. Austin, Texas? Yes, Austin, not Boston. I love Boston, man. No, you can go Austin. right across to New York. Hey, man, Austin. Wait, when are you there, though? Uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Hey, everyone. Hook em horns. Charlie Stronghold, the new coach of the Texas Longhorns, will be on stage with no, Brian. Man. No, listen, man. You're out of line, bro. In Boston. No, Austin. Wait, why is Charlie Stronghold in Boston? Hey, man, it's Austin. Boston? Austin. Boston Beans. Austin. Boston Red Sox. Austin. New England Patriots. Austin. Boston. Austin. <laughs> All right, I'm turning my phone on. You're going to get some distortion. This is the Fighter and the Kid remix 2.0. Two Wait. shows, two days, redo. Go see Brian in Boston. Uh, Austin. Austin. Go see Brian in Austin. Austin. Yell out Big Brown. Hey, I need some ideas what to get Brian for his birthday. Tweet us at Brian Callen, at Brendan Schaub. Give me some ideas. I need to throw a birthday party for this guy. He has spots all over his body. See him in Austin. We're out. Austin. Peace.